السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلي وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله ما بعد من أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهجه ديونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار. Now inshallah we'll start chapter ten, book of manners, the manners of going to the bathroom. And subhanallah we discussed this chapter in Saturday's halqa. صح. So uh, this is a good way we we should repeat. Maybe you, you, you study the same chapter, this chapter found in the books of fiqh and also in the books of manners. Like uh, what we discussed in Thursday halqa or Friday's halqa. I mean Friday's night, Kitab al-Tawheed. We discussed in nidr, the vow. And this chapter also is discussed in the books of fiqh. Sometimes you, the same chapter is discussed in aqidah and fiqh, or in fiqh and manners. Why? Because the vow can be discussed from aqidah side and also from fiqh side. And some scholars, they discuss, discuss it in details in the books of aqidah. So now, inshallah, we will repeat what we mentioned on Saturday. Maybe some points more here. Or less. The manners of going to the uh, to the bathroom. The uh, the etiquettes of going to the bathroom. Number one, page two two eight. Avoid relieving yourself in three places. You have to avoid these three places, as mentioned in the hadith. The Prophet ﷺ said, Stay away from the three malain. What is the meaning of mala'in? Its exact meaning will become clear in the following discussion. Excreting stool in mawarid, pathways that lead to water, in the middle of the road, and in the shade. We have to avoid, stay away from these three things, because if you do them, or one of them, you will bring the curse to yourself. People will curse you because of these three actions or one of them. What are they? The Prophet ﷺ mentioned uh, the first one, Al-Baraza fil Mawarid. Al-Baraza fil Mawarid. Excreting stool in Mawarid. Pathways that lead to water. This is subhanAllah very, very bad. When you put your stool inside the water, the pathway of water that people are using for them to wash or to drink. This is haram, strictly haram. And this will bring the curse to you. People will curse you. Who, who did this? SubhanAllah. And the second one, in the middle of the road. People walk, then they see something. Nijis, filth. Then people start, may Allah curse him, the one who did this here. This is haram. And the third one, and in the shade. The Prophet ﷺ said, wadhil, the shade. Maybe there is a big tree in one place, and usually people stay under this tree in the morning or in the noon time or in the asr time. It is haram. And also some scholars said, Fil makan al mushmis. If there is a place, there is a sun. Usually this is in the cold areas. They they need the sun. They want some, some place which is warm. Okay? Why? Because they say the, the same concept. Yani, here the Prophet ﷺ mentioned why. Okay? It is not mentioned why. But the school said, this is a clear. Why this is haram? Because it is a clear. All of these things are uh, useful for people. So you will stop, you, sorry, by your, your action, you will stop people to get the benefit from these three things. Then people will curse you. 
So the wisdom is clear here in these three, th three things. And this is also under the general rule, it is haram to bother any Muslim, to cause any harm for any, uh, any Muslim. طيب. If you notice in this hadith, there is la'an. Uh, la'an, what does it mean for la'an? Curse. So is it allowed to curse? Okay, someone asked, I think, send me a question yesterday or some, someday. Cursing people, is it allowed or not? Okay, this is an issue. So, cursing generally for uh, certain actions, this is allowed. This is allowed, like what we mentioned, if you remember Kitab Tawheed, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, لَعَنَ اللَّهِ مَنْ دَبَحَ لِغَيْرِ اللَّهِ لعن الله من لعن والدي لعن الله من آوى محدثة لعن الله من غير منار الأرض حديث صحيح مسلم The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam cursed the, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in Sahih Muslim that Allah cursed four types of people So it means Allah, يعني Allah cursed the one who slaughtered slot for other than Allah the one, who slot, uh, the one who curses his parents he will be cursed the one who protects the innovator, Mubtadi' Muhdith, or a killer, for example, someone who, who did a crime. And the fourth one, Man Ghayyara Manar al Ard. What is the meaning of Man Ghayyara Manar al Ard? Okay, one meaning that if I have, for example, usually this is between the people who, among people who have farms. For example, I have a farm. And this is the border. And this is my farm. And this is my neighbor. So my neighbor comes at night, Ashkur. And he, he, he takes maybe one meter for his farm. Maybe people who have farms, they know this. Okay? So this, this person is cursed by, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. لَعَنَ اللَّهِ مَنْ غَيَّرَ مَنَارَ الْأَرْضِ He changed the borders and the margins of the land. And also there is another meaning mentioned by some scholars. They say, if there is a sign, for example, you are driving a car, okay? So you'll find this is the Fahil side, Al-Ahmadi, Farwaniya. So if you change, for example, to the right, you can go to Fahil. So you, you change to the left. Why you do this? Making fun, maybe. This is haram and you, you, you are cursed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is considered as a major sin. Or maybe some people, not for fun. Maybe some people, they change to steal. They want to steal the money. For example, you are going toward Mecca. So this is the side of Makkah, they, so they change the signal. Not to the right, go to the left. Why you go to the left? It is dark, no people, you can stop them and you kill them and you take their money. So if you change, you are cursed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is a major sin. And you will find many hadith or many ayat that Allah mentioned and or the Prophet mentioned Allah'an, cursing. So if it is by general, uh, if it is general, يعني may Allah curse those who uh, curse their parents. Did you specify a person? No. Then it is allowed. May Allah curse the kuffar. May Allah curse the dhalimeen, the wrongdoers. Can I say this? Yes, there is no problem. You can say this. طيب? Of course, if you have a proof. If you have a proof from the Quran and Sunnah, can I, uh, I curse the kuffar? Yes. Allah mentioned the, the Quran, فَلَعْنَةُ اللَّهِ عَلَى الْكَافِرِينَ لَعْنَةُ اللَّهِ عَلَى الْكَافِرِينَ The curse of Allah upon the kuffar. طيب. The Prophet ﷺ said, لَعْنَ اللَّهِ مَنْ دَبَحَ لِغَيْرِ اللَّهِ Allah cares the one who slaughtered for other than Allah. Now, if you see a person doing this, can you curse him? May Allah curse you. You go to other person who's doing one of these actions, 
and you say, you specify him. Or for example, you are sitting with your friend and you say, may Allah curse this person. Is it allowed or not? Okay. Some scholars said this is not allowed. Even for the kuffar. It is not allowed to say, if there is a kafir. If there is a kafir, it is not allowed to curse him by name. May Allah curse this George or uh, Baker or, no. This is not allowed. Why? They say because, Hadith Bukhari, in the battle of Uhud, subhanAllah, the kuffar uh, beat the Prophet وسلم, and they were going to kill him. He was going to be killed. But Alhamdulillah, Allah saved him. So they, they, they broke his, his tooth and they injured his face. Then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, كَيْفَ يُفْلِحُ قَوْمْ شَجَّوْ وَجْهَ نَبِيهِمْ أَوْ رَأْسَ نَبِيهِمْ How people succeed, how people will succeed after injuring their Prophet. And in the Salah, the Prophet Sallallahu said, اللَّهُمَّ الْعَنْ فُلَانًا وَالْعَنْ فُلَانًا in the Salah, the Prophet وسلم, said after the Ruku' This is called Qunut al-Nawazil This is called Qunut al-Nawazil What is the meaning of Qunut al-Nawazil? It means to make Dua You raise your hand After the Ruku' in the Fard Salah Which Fard Salah? Any Fajr, Dhuhr, Asr, Maghrib, Isha not only Fajr, any one of them, or all of them. You make dua for people or against people. If there is a Muslim a brother or there are Muslim people who are in very difficult situation, so we can make dua for them in the Salah. Maybe you remember many times we did dua for the people in Syria like this. Or you make dua against people. This is called Qunut al-Nawazil. What does it mean Qunut al-Nawazil? There is, there is something and you make dua. It is not permanent. Not every day and every month. No. There is something, so you make dua. Maybe for one week, one month, something like this. When you do the dua, after ruku', you raise the, the imam raises his hand and make dua. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, after the ruku', he said, Allahumma al'an fulanan wa fulanan wa fulanan. Oh, Allah cares this person and this person and this person. So he mentioned the names. He specified names. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed, لَيْسَ لَكَ مِنَ الْأَمْرِ شَيْءٍ يَتُوبُ عَلَيْهِمْ It is not for you. Allah said to the Prophet in Surah, Surah Ali Imran, Allah said, it is not for you, O Muhammad. Because what is the meaning of Allah mal'an? What is the meaning of cursing? It means to be out of the mercy of Allah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told the Prophet ﷺ, said, this is not in your hand. I decide he is out of my mercy or not. And the scholar said, subhanAllah, those who, are who were mentioned in the dua of Rasulullah ﷺ, all of them became Muslims. Okay, so some scholars said, because of this incident, it is not allowed to specify. It is not allowed to specify. But also there is hadith. Yani some scholars, the, other kind, uh, the other group of scholars, they say, no, it is allowed. It is allowed. Why? Because in the hadith, there is, there is in the hadith Bukhari, there was a man, a companion. He was funny. Or usually makes the Prophet I send them to, to love. Always making jokes like this. His name, Abdullah. Abdullah. His name what? And what is his nickname? Himar. 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 What is the meaning of Himar? Donkey. This is in Bukhari hadith. And subhanAllah, he loves al khamr. He likes to drink khamr. Every time he drinks khamr, they catch him. They give him the slashes, they beat him, the punishment, and they release him. Again, he drinks, and they bring. 
Subhanallah. As a human being, the companions are human beings. So on one day, they, as usual, they caught him. They start to beat him. Then one of the companions said, لَعَنَهُ اللَّهِ مَا أَكْثَرْ مَا يُؤْتَى بِهِ May Allah curse him. Many times he is in this place for this punishment. Immediately the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, لا تلعن. Don't curse him. Because he loves Allah and he loves Rasulullah. Okay? So, some scholars say this hadith is a proof that to specify a person in cursing is allowed. How? Yes, Zakallah khair. The Prophet وسلم, said, Don't curse him because this person loves Allah and loves Rasulullah. So, for those who don't love Allah, it is allowed to curse him, to curse them, to specify them and curse him. Okay? So, this is a proof for the, the, the scholars who said it is allowed. It is allowed. But no doubt, to be safe, to be safe, don't specify people in cursing. Don't say, X, Z, Y, may Allah curse him. Try to avoid this. How? You say, may Allah curse the wrongdoers. May Allah curse this and this. Yes. There's a problem? It is not working? The, the internet? No? The, the internet is not okay. <laughs> Pause, huh? The internet, the last day. Okay, try with this one. Huh? Because Uridu, Uridu is, is weak here, sir. So. I think Zane is good here. Try, try with Zane. Alaykum salam wa barakatuh, hayyakum Allah. Alaykum salam. So, uh, to be safe, Avoid cursing a person by his name. Yeah. Yani, yes, we mentioned the hadith, but still the hadith is not a clear hadith to say the, that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam cursed someone by his name. Yes, he cursed by, his, by their names. But Allah revealed an ayah that we, we understand that this is not allowed. Okay? So to be safe, avoid cursing people by names. Okay? How can I curse? By general. By general, may Allah curse the kuffar, may Allah curse the wrongdoers, may Allah curse the, those who are taking riba. Then this is okay. And also if you remember, it is not the way of the good Muslim to curse a lot. It is not the way of the Muslim to curse a lot. Every day you curse three, four, five times, this is not the way of the Muslim. What will happen at the Day of Judgment for the people who curse a lot? Hey, they will not be intercessors or <coughs> two things. They will lose two things. They will not be, they will not have the chance to intercede for others and also yes, they will not be witness for others. Inna <laughs> 
those who curse a lot will not be intercessors and will not be witnesses at the day of judgment. Okay? Okay? Sorry? The hadith says, the brother Abu Abdullah is asking about the hadith, Man ghayyara manara al-ard. Okay? The hadith says, La'an Allah man ghayyara manara al-ard. Okay, what is the meaning of غير منار الأرض? They say it, it, it means من غير منار الأرض من who, the one who changed the borders. Okay, and the other meaning who changed the, the signals. It is possible that it means this and also it is possible to mean the other one. Okay. طيب. And also he mentioned another hadith in page 229. اتقوا اللعانين من هم يا رسول الله قال الذي يتخلى في طريق الناس أو في ظلهم Beware of اللعانين Again we will discuss its exact meaning. The companion asked and what are the لعانين رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم said the one who relieves himself in the pathway of people or in their shade. Okay. Still, he did not explain what is the meaning of la'anayn. La'anayn means the things which bring the curse for yourself. The things, if you do, will bring the curse for yourself. So you have to avoid these actions. You have to avoid these two actions. طيب. There is hadith, he, he, mentioned, he mentioned a point, page 231. It is known that when the Prophet ﷺ would relieve himself, he would seek cover so no one would see him under a group of date palm trees, okay? Given that such a group of trees surely give shade, how can we find harmony between the Prophet's action and his prohib prohibition? No doubt if there are trees, palm trees, there is shade. And the Prophet ﷺ used to, to search for this kind of shade to release, relieve himself. How can we make, we join between these two ahadith? He said the shade under which it is forbidden to relieve oneself is the shade that people go to and sit under to protect themselves from the heat of the sun. What is forbidden if there is a, a big tree, for example, or group of trees? And people usually sit under these trees. Then it is forbidden. But for example, if there is a small tree, or three, four, five trees, you are, you are not, people are not getting the benefit to use the shade of these trees, then it is allowed to relieve yourself. Okay? This way, we can join between these two ahadith. طيب. Number two, the prohibition of urinating in, in stagnant water. الماء الراكد أو الدائم. Why? Because the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم forbade the practice of urinating in stagnant water. That means in water that doesn't flow, such such as a pond. This is not allowed. For example, if you are in a desert, then people uh, sorry people usually take the benefit of the rain. They wait the rain, then the water gather in one place. Then they can use this water to drink and to wash. It is stagnant water. Then it is not allowed to urinate in this water. It is not allowed to urinate. If you remember last, last year, the rain was very strong in Kuwait and Saudi and Gulf, صح? Even in the desert. 
Subhanallah, many ponds in the desert in Saudi, then mashallah. Okay? Then it is not allowed. It is haram. Okay? Uh, why? The, the, the scholars mention because subhanallah, this can, يعني, the point is, it is a big amount of water. The point is, this, I mean, the point is not that because the water will become just. No, because of the, the diseases. Or maybe it will become najis with time. Imagine every day, 10, 20, 100 people urinate inside this water. What will happen? No doubt, after a few days, it will become najis. It will become filth. It is not like the sea. It is not like the rivers. We are talking about a closed place. Stagnant water. Then it is haram. And subhanallah, many diseases, and sometimes dangerous diseases, happen in, in the areas where, where the people urinate inside the water. Okay? Uh, they, they use the water to drink, to wash, and some people urinate inside the water. Especially this disease, what is the name of the disease? Bilharsia. Bilharsia. Huh? Kala? Not uh, What is famous? Bilharsia. Bilharsia, schistosoma, hematobian. This is called the name in medicine. And subhanAllah, this can affect the, the liver. And yeah, some of them said there is a relation between hepatitis and uh, this disease. Okay, yani, it is famous and common in Egypt because of the, the wrong way, they, because they don't follow the sunnah. They use the water and also some people urinate. They drink, they wash, and they use for watering the, the farms, subhanAllah. So this is very dangerous, very dangerous. So if you follow the sunnah, you will be safe. If you follow the sunnah, then you will be, uh, you will be safe. Tayyib. So Nawawi, rahimahullah, said, if the water, if there is a big amount of water and the water is running, okay, then it is, it is permissible. We will not say it is haram. We will not say it is haram. طيب. Number three. Number three. It is dislike to take into the toilet or any place that is commonly used for the same purpose anything that has the remembrance of Allah in it. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. طيب. What is the proof? They, they mention a common hadith, but not authentic hadith. The Prophet ﷺ entered the toilet. Uh, sorry, he removed his ring before entering the toilet. And what is written on the, on the, on the ring? Muhammad Rasulullah. But this is not authentic hadith. This is not authentic hadith. طيب. But, uh, يعني, يعني, يعني for example, the, the Kuwaiti money, now alhamdulillah, they remove the name of Allah. If you remember, Last, uh, the, you know, the, the new currency, I think last year, صح? 2000, uh, the new one, Jalal. 2017? You don't know? Huh? It was 2017 or 18? The new one. Okay, before it, all of them written, what is written on the money? The bank will make problem for you. Billah <laughs> nasta'in. If it is written, if you check if you have something old, okay, it is written Billah Nasta'in. Eh, Billah Nasta'in means you have? Huh? You have? Okay, give to the bank. They can give you a new. It is written what? Billah Nasta'in. So there is a name of Allah on the money. And they removed. Some people said, look what they are doing. They removed the name of Allah. <laughs> so, يعني, what is the problem? They removed the name. Alhamdulillah, this makes us makes the life easier for us because we need to. We have to respect the name of Allah. We need to respect the name of Allah. Okay, what, what is the benefit to keep to put the name of Allah on the money? Okay, the the, the non-Muslims taking the the money. Maybe they, there is some there food. So remove the name of Allah. خلاص. Okay. 
But, yani, uh, Sheikh Mu'adhemi said, if there is need, yeah, suppose the, and there is name of Allah and the money, so you keep your money outside the toilet? Okay, of course, people will steal. Right? So, uh, I take the money with me inside. But they said, for the Mus'haf, no. For the Mus'haf, right? for, the, for the Mus'haf, no. Right? As the Sheikh Mu'adhemi, rahimahullah, mentioned, this is, uh, in page 232, as for Mus'haf, Quran, it is without a doubt forbidden to, to take it inside of a place that is regularly used as a toilet. Right? So Sheikh Al-Thami said, no doubt. No doubt. Right? But they, uh, yani they said, it is allowed if you, if you think that they will steal the Mus'haf. But usually this is easy, inshallah. Yeah. And you can keep it with your wife, with your friend. Tayyib. Who, who will steal the Mus'haf? Who will steal the Mus'haf, Tayyib? Uh, number four. Number four. The prohibition of facing the Qibla or turning one's back to it when using the toilet. It is forbidden in the hadith. Why? Because hadith. The hadith came in Bukhari and Muslim. The Prophet said when, on page 233, when one of you goes to defecate, then he should neither face the qibla nor turn his back to it, but rather it should be to his east or west. طيب. So this is a clear hadith, don't do. So if there is hadith, don't do, it means haram. It means uh, haram. طيب. But there is hadith. There is hadith. Jabir ibn Abdullah radiyallahu ta'ala anhu said, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the same page, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam forbade us from facing the qibla and urinating at the same time. Then one year before he died, I saw him facing it while he was urinating. So this is Hadith Jabir Abdullah. And in yet another narration, Marwan al-Asfar related that he saw Abdullah ibn Umar عنه, make his camel kneel facing the Qibla. He then sat down to urinate facing it, means facing the Qibla. Marwan said, O oh, Abu Abdul Rahman, was not this practice forbidden? Abdullah ibn Umar said, yes, it was forbidden out in the open, but it is okay when there is something between you and the Qibla to cover you. So this is the, the fiqh of Abdullah ibn Umar, that it is allowed inside the toilet, but in the open place, it is not allowed. And this is one of the opinions. This is one of the opinions. Uh, if you notice Hadith Jabir, Hadith Jabir, which is before Hadith Abdullah ibn Umar, Jabir radiallahu ta'ala said, the Prophet said, don't do this. But before one year of his death, I saw him doing this. I saw the Prophet وسلم, facing the Qibla while narrating. So Jabir Abdullah did not mention that there is a barrier or there is a camel or there is a wall. صح? Did he mention something? He did not mention. So that's why, that's why some scholars said it is makruh. It is makruh. Some scholars said, like Shawkani said, there are seven opinions about this issue. Seven opinions. Okay? And one of them that it is makruh. Why? They said because the Prophet وسلم, said don't do, and in his action he did. He did face the Qibla and he did give his back to the Qibla. So we said it is makruh. It is not haram. It is not haram. And maybe this is very strong opinion to say facing the Qibla or giving your back to the Qibla while urinating or defecating is makruh. And also we tell the people try to avoid Yes, it is makruh, it means it is allowed. 
But if you avoid, Allah will give you reward. And this came in a hadith. Sheikh Al-Albani said this is authentic hadith. مَنْ لَمْ يَسْتَقْبِ الْقِبْلَ وَلَمْ يَسْتَدْبِرْهَا كُتِبَتْ لَوْ حَسَنَا The one who doesn't face the qibla and also the one who doesn't give his back to the qibla, Allah will write for him a hasana. Allah will give him reward. So try to avoid this. Inside the toilet or in the open place. Yeah, for example, if it is inside your house or يعني, if you book a hotel in one country, then you notice that the toilet toward the qibla or at the back of the qibla, try to go to the right or to the left. Why? To get the hasanat. We will not say because this is haram, but we say to, to gain hasanat. To gain hasanat. طيب. Number five, on page 235. What you should say and do when you are entering and leaving the bathroom. طيب. Uh, when you enter, طيب. when you enter, there is something specifically for the toilet, and there is something general before removing your clothes. So before removing your clothes, you say Bismillah. Why? To protect your aura from the jinn. The Prophet ﷺ said the barrier between you and the jinn to see you is to say Bismillah. Subhanallah, brothers and sisters, if you notice, the jinn, I mean the shaitan of jinn, is easier than the shaitan of ins. If you say Bismillah, khalas. He cannot see you. But subhanAllah, the shaitan of ins, the human shaitan, if you say Bismillah, if you recite the Quran, if you recite the adhkar, maybe he will fix a camera to see your aura. And saying Bismillah cannot protect you, protect you from the camera. So subhanAllah, the ins is more difficult than the jinn. If the jinn is making wiswas, if the jinn is trying to tell you to do the haram, it is very easy. You say, A'udhu billahi min shaitan rajim, and the shaitan will disappear. He will go away from you. But if there is a human being telling you to do a sin, if you say, A'udhu billah, if you say, Bismillah, if you recite Ayat al-Kursi, he is with you. He will not disappear. Subhanallah. So people think that the jinn, the jinn are difficult and the strong. They are not strong. They are not difficult. You think that they are strong and difficult when you are weak. Because of our weakness, we think that they are strong. One of the brothers asked me about a situation. Uh, one brother there in UK, his wife is suffering, most probably because of jinn. And he doesn't want to make ruqya, or he doesn't want to recite Quran. He said, because I am afraid maybe the jinn comes to me. <laughs> yes, well, this is serious. Yani. Why you are loved? This, this can happen, subhanAllah. So I told him, tell your friend to be careful. He should not show his weakness to the shaitan. Not only to the shaitan. Don't show your weakness to any of your enemy. If your enemy knows that you are weak, then خلاص, he will attack. But if your enemy knows, if your enemy thinks that you are strong, then he'll be afraid. So don't show your weakness for others. Don't show, show your weakness for others. Don't give them that. Don't give them the chance to beat or to attack you. So be strong and trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then the shaitan, brothers, the Allah and sisters, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi said, when the mu'addin gives the adhan, the shaitan will run away. Only by giving the adhan. When the mu'addin says, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, the shaitan will run away from the masjid. 
And when the adhan finished, he will come back again. Again, he will run away. Subhanallah. So he's very weak. If you are with the dhikr of Allah, if you are with the remembrance of Allah, then you are strong. But if you are away from the remembrance of Allah, then the shaitan will be stronger than you. Stronger than, than you. Subhanallah. So you say, Bismillah. Then you protect your aura from the shaitan. He cannot see you. He cannot see your private parts. Okay? So this is for the toilet or for any uh, time when you want to change your clothes. Before removing your clothes, you say, Bismillah. Okay? Then, specifically for the toilet, you say, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-khubthi wal khaba'ith. You say, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-khubthi wal khaba'ith. Oh Allah, I'm seeking refuge in you from al-khubth, it means from the evil. Wal khaba'ith from the jinn or from the shayateen, from the people of evil. And خلاص, he will not touch you. In this hadith in Bukhari. طيب. After you finish, you say, غفرانك. And you ask Allah to forgive your sins. غفرانك. The scholars talk a lot about... What, okay, it is clear to say, Allah من يعود بك من خبتي والخبات. Okay, we know, we understand. But what is the relation to say غفرانك at the end? Allah alam exactly why. But some scholars say, when you are inside the toilet, okay, why, why, why we go to the toilet? To relieve the dirt from the body. And why we should say, why should we say ghufranak? To relieve the dirt of the heart, the sins. So as if we are saying, oh Allah, after cleaning our, our blood and our body from the stool, oh Allah, clear our hearts from the sins. So we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's why we say, ghufranak, after, the, after you finish from the toilet. Dinner is ready. Can we have a break? I don't know about the sisters, if they get their dinner or not. We should wait? Huh? Okay, we, we have a break for 10 or 15 minutes, then we continue, inshallah. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa ashadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lahu ashadu anu muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluhu amma ba'd. This is very important that uh, to study the manners of uh, the, the bathroom. They asked Salman al-Farisi. Some kuffar, some non-Muslims ask the, the great scholar, the great companion, Salman al-Farisi, radiallahu ta'ala. They said, what is this man? He taught you everything. They mean the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa He taught you everything. Even he taught you the, the manners of toilet and bath bathroom. Salman Farisi, Salman Farisi they, they, they want Salman Farisi to feel shy. Salman Farisi, yes. He taught us everything. He taught us how to use the three stones at least, and he told us not to face the Qibla. What is the problem? This is our religion. So as Muslims, you have to be proud. Make sure that your religion is a strong religion. Don't be shy. Maybe some people feel shy to use the miswak to clean their teeth, the teeth. Or maybe the, the women, uh, some of them feel shy because of the niqab. Okay? No, don't, feel, don't be shy. You should be proud. You are following the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Okay? Maybe some of the brothers feel shy because of the, the trouser or the, the thobe, the, their dress, below, uh, sorry, above the ankle. No, you have to be proud. I am following the sunnah. 
I am following the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Why should I be shy? I am proud in following my sunnah, in following my beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Okay, so nowadays the Muslim, many Muslims don't like to show their sunnah. Don't like to show that we are following the sunnah. You have to show that you are following the sunnah. Teach people the sunnah. You have to teach people that this is the sunnah. I am following the sunnah because it is sunnah. We have to follow the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We love the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Salman Farisi, what is the problem? Yes, I know he taught us to do this and this, this, and not to do this and this. Alhamdulillah, we don't have any, any problem. Radiyallahu ta'ala an. Tayyib. Uh, which point? Number six, sah? Number six. When you relieve yourself, on page 237, when you relieve yourself, make sure no one can see you. Subhanallah. This is the fitrah. This is the fitrah. The fitrah that as a human being, you cover your private part. Not to give the chance for others to see your awrah. Allah told us what Adam and his wife, Hawa, Eve, did after eating from this, the, the tree. فَأَكَلَا مِنْهَا فَبَدَتْ لَهُمَا سَوْآتُهُمَا وَطَفِقَا يَخْصِفَانِ عَلَيْهِمَا مِنْ وَرَقِ الْجَنَّةِ Allah told Adam and his wife, Hawa, don't eat from this tree. What is this tree? Apple? We don't know. Allah alam. Maybe apple. Maybe something else. Allah alam. Not important to know. The Yahud or some of the Yahud, some of the Jews say this tree is the tree of knowledge. They say this is the tree of knowledge. So that's why they hate the knowledge. They are against the knowledge. They don't want people to learn. They don't want people to know the modern life. Why? Because they believe Adam was out of the paradise because of the knowledge. Of course, this is wrong belief. Wrong belief, okay? So when Adam alayhi salatu was salam and his wife ate from this tree, immediately Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uncovered them. فَأَكَلَا مِنْهَا فَبَدَتْ لَهُمَا سَوْآتُهُمَا Immediately, they were uncovered. And immediately, فَطَفِقَا يَخْصِفَانِ عَلَيْهِمَا مِنْ وَرَقِ الْجَنَّةِ Immediately, they took some of the leaves from the paradise. Why? To cover their aura. To cover their private part. Subhanallah. So this is the nature, the, no, the normal nature of the human being. To cover. So if, now, if the people now who are uncovering and they like to walk naked or almost naked, they are following the steps of shaitan. Shaitan wants this, and the shaitan is telling them this. And subhanAllah, you can't notice this with our kids. You notice this with our kids. Even the small baby, two years old, he doesn't like to show his private part for others. From where? This is the nature, subhanAllah, from Allah. Fitrah from Allah subhanahu. So, the sunnah and the wajib is to cover yourself. The wajib and the sunnah is to cover yourself. The Prophet, the, one of the companions asked the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, O Rasulullah, what about the awrah? What about the private part? How, how should we deal with this? The Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, said, إن استطعت فاحفظ عورتك أن لا سوري إن استطعت أن لا يراها أن لا يراها أحد if you can don't show your عورة for anyone except for your wife or ما ملكت يمينك for the يعني ملك اليمين the female slave for you okay so for your wife it's okay but for other than your wife no, this is okay. Try your best to cover your aura. Subhanallah. 
So, in the toilet, okay, for the bathroom, you need to cover your aura. You need to make sure that people don't see your aura, your private part. This in the Sunnah, the Prophet used to go away until he disappears, alayhi salatu wasalam. You cannot see him. Or, as we mentioned before the dinner, that he, he tries to find small trees to cover his aura during urinating, alayhi salatu wasalam. So this is very important to make sure that you are covering your aura. طيب. What about the, as we mentioned last Saturday, the places, in, or in some places, there is, uh, what do you call the urinar? <laughs> the urinars, huh? Stand up and they urinate. طيب. Is it allowed or not? We said it depends. You have to make, because the next point, is it allowed to stand up and, and urinate? This is allowed. This is allowed, why? Because the Prophet وسلم, did this, but very rare. And most of the time, he was in a sitting position. طيب. So, so uh, Tanwir, you are leaving? So, is it allowed or not, this urinary? We say this depends. We have to make sure that you are protecting your aura. This number one. And number two, we have to make sure that the urine, the najasa, the filth, okay, doesn't touch you. And also number three, it is in a way that you can clean yourself. We can make sure that you can clean, clean yourself without uh, exposing your aura for others. But if it is in a situation that you, don't, you are not sure because you start in a standing position and, and usually three, four urinars together. Okay, of course, if he stands up beside me, he can't see. And also I can't see, then it is haram. Why? Because you cannot protect your aura. Or if it is designed in a way that the urine will come on my dress, also it is not allowed, haram. So why I'm saying this? Because many Muslims, when they see this urine, they say, this is, oh, this is the way of the kuffar, this is haram. Habibi, please don't say for anything from the kuffar haram. We have to make sure, is it haram in Islam or not? Is it haram or not? So if it is designed in a way that you can protect your aura and you, you are sure that the urine will not touch you, then it's okay. But if it is designed in a way that people can see your aura or you see the aura of others and the urine will come back on your body or your clothes, then this is not allowed. This is, uh, uh, this is not allowed. طيب. طيب. Then the next point, point number seven, point number seven, Passing urine when standing or sitting. Aisha radiallahu ta'ala said, Man haddatakum anna rasoolallahi sallallahu alayhi sallam baala qa'iman fala tusaddiquuh. Ma baala illa qa'idan. Aisha said, if anyone relates to you that the messenger of Allah urinated while he was standing up, then don't believe him. He would always be seated when he urinated. Okay, this is Hadith Aisha. Tayyib. The next Hadith, Hadith Hudayfa. Where is Hadith Hudayfa? Bukhari and Muslim. Hadith Hudayfa where? Bukhari and Muslim. Muslim. And it is stronger than Hadith Aisha, no doubt. He said, Radiyallahu ta'ala an, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and I were walking together when he, we came across Subata. Subata, public dump. Of people, and it was behind a garden. He then stood just as one of you stands and passed urine. So, this authentic hadith clear that the Prophet was in sitting or standing position? Standing position. I want these brothers and sisters, I want you to notice that 
Aisha mentioned some very strict statement. If anyone tells you that the Prophet ﷺ did this while standing, don't believe him. Very strong, huh? So subhanAllah, this can happen as a human being. Okay, can we say that Hudayfa is a liar? No, we cannot. We cannot. Radhi Allah Ta'ala and why? Because Aisha told us what she she saw. Okay, and of course Aisha was not with the Prophet 24 hours. Tonight with Aisha. The next night with Hafsa, the next with Zainab, the next with the other Zainab, the next with the Um Salama, with the Um Habiba. So not every night with Aisha. And also when the Prophet traveled, not every time Aisha went with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This time Aisha with, with him. But next time the Prophet traveled for one month with Hafsa. So no doubt she doesn't know all everything happened during this month. So she narrated, she told us what she knows and what she saw. Radi Allah Ta'ala Anha. So we cannot say that Aisha is lying and also we cannot say that Hudayfa is lying. Everyone told us what he experienced. So maybe, maybe you ask me about a person. Is he a smoker? No, never. Okay, he comes to the Tuesday halqa, Saturday halqa, Friday halqa, Thursday halqa. He doesn't smoke. Okay, yani, but he is with us only during the halqa two hours. Two hours Thursday, two hours Friday, two hours. Okay, so total during the week, only 10 hours. What about the morning when he's at work? Maybe he's smoking at work. So when I tell you, no, this brother is not smoking. And if there is another brother not with us in the halqa, but he is with him at work, or he, he is his neighbor, and he said he is a smoker, should I say one of us is a liar? No. I am telling what, I'm, what I know. And also he said what he knows. Tamam? Tayyib? So is it allowed? or not, generally speaking, this is allowed to urinate while standing. But no doubt, if you do it in a sitting position, this is better, why? Because most of the time, the Prophet was doing this. Which position? Sitting. And also, we can add something that, if you think that the, the najasa, the urine will touch you, in a sitting position, then we tell you stand up. Maybe you go to, to, to some toilets, and it is very dirty, and urine and najasa filth. So if you sit down, then what will happen? The najasa will come on your clothes. So in this situation, I will tell you stand up, don't sit down. Okay? So in this, in this situation, don't sit, uh, sit down. Or maybe sometimes you are in a place, if you stand up, people will see your awra. So it is not allowed to stand up, you should sit down. Okay, so it depends on your situation, depends on your situation. Number eight, the prohibition of using one's right hand to clean oneself after passing stool or urine. Why? Because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said in page 240, when one of you urinates, then let him not hold his private part with his right hand. Let him not then clean himself with his right hand. So there are two points here. The first point, when you urinate, don't touch your penis by your right hand. So this is a clear. Don't touch by your right hand. Here the scholars say, is it specific only when you are urinating or any time? Okay, like Bukhari, Abu Dawood, they said, 
This is only when you are urinating. Because the Prophet said, only when you are urinating, إِذَا بَعْلَ أَحَدُكُمْ When you urinate, don't hold, don't touch your penis by your right hand. But for example, you are, uh, for example, you are applying a cream. Can I use the right hand? Yes, you can use. You are taking shower. Can I touch by the right hand? Yes, you can touch. So when it is forbidden, while urinating. Okay, this is the hadith. This is the hadith. This is the first part. And the second part, don't clean yourself by the right hand. Use the left hand. Use the left hand. And if you remember, the general rule, the right hand for salam, for eating, taking, giving. The left hand for the other things. For the other things. And they say, يعني, according to this rule, when I use the siwak, if you want to clean your mouth by siwak, should we use the right hand or the left hand? Uh, we don't have a clear hadith to say, use the right hand. But some scholars, they mention something nice. A proof that it, it, the sunnah to be with the right hand. If you have a siwak, okay, if you have the siwak, okay, should I hold the siwak by the right hand or the left? They say by the right. What is the proof? They said at the end of the life of Rasulullah sallallahu okay, the brother of Aisha entered the house and the Prophet sallallahu was too sick. Even it was difficult for him to talk. But Aisha radiallahu ta'ala noticed that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam looked at the siwak in the hand of her brother. I think Abdurrahman ibn Abi Bakr. Immediately she understood that the Prophet sallallahu likes to use the siwak. So she took the siwak from her brother and then she made it soft. Then she gave the siwak to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Some scholars said this is a proof that using the siwak by the right hand. Why? Because usually to give and take by which hand? The right. And if it is sunnah to use the left hand, then the narrator of the hadith will tell us the Prophet ﷺ took it by the right hand, then he used the left hand. So this is a proof that the Sunnah to use the right hand. But I know, I know it is not clear proof. But it is a nice proof that when you are cleaning your teeth by the siwak, use which hand? The right. Use the right hand. Okay. Uh, okay. So don't clean your private part of the, the, in the toilet by using the right. Use the left. Use uh, the left. There is a point I did not mention last Saturday. Uh, we mentioned that it is allowed uh, to use the, the tissue, the stones, and like these things. He said, if someone removed the najasa directly, directly uh, by his hand, he cleaned himself by his hand. They say, no, this is not allowed. This is not allowed. For example, if your hand is dry, then you cleaned your, the urine or the stool by the hand directly. The left hand, not the right, the left. Okay, I do not use the right, but I use the left. They say, no, this is not acceptable. You have to use something. You have to use something. Yeah, for example, someone used one finger, the second and the third, three times. It's not allowed. It is not allowed. He mentioned a point that the hadith uh, mentions the cleaning one's private part for urinating, but not one's anus. 
What is the answer? In accordance with the Islamic principles of uh, analogy, just as it is forbidden to touch one's private part after urinating, so to is uh, so too is to forbidden to clean one's anus with his right hand. The hadith is about a dhakr. Hasif. Ma fi surah? أول كان في صورة؟ شيل هذا سيف طيب. So we can we we uh, is this rule apply for for also the anus? Yes, the same thing. Not only for the penis, also for the anus. Also for uh, the anus. Yeah, and it means don't use the, the right hand to clean the anus. He mentioned a point re uh, regarding the wudu. About the wudu, the, there is hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that your penis is part of your body. And another hadith, he said, if you touch, you have to make wudu. If you touch, you have to make wudu. Uh, how you can join between these two hadith? Inshallah, we'll discuss this more in the fiqh uh, uh, halqa, Saturday halqa morning, that touching the private, uh, private part will invalidate the wudu or not. We have two different hadith. Okay, some scholars say this hadith is authentic, the other scholars say no, the other hadith is authentic. So, uh, different opinions. Sheikh al Bain said both of them are authentic. Both of them are authentic. Sheikh uh, Al-Tameen, also, Sheikh Islam Taymiyyah, before him, they said, okay, both of them are authentic, but it will not, if you touch your private part, will not invalidate your wudu, but it is mustahab, it is recommended to make wudu. And this is what, he, what, what Sheikh Ibn Taymiyyah said. But then later, Sheikh Ibn Taymiyyah changed his position, and he said, if you touch your private part, for example, you are changing your dress, okay, or you are scratching, then you touch, then no need to make wudu. But if you touch and there is a lust, there is a desire, then you have to make wudu. Why he said? Because the hadith, man masa the one who touches his, his private part, man masa the his penis, he should make wudu. Okay, and no doubt, to be safe, you make wudu. To be safe, you make wudu in touching your part. But for example, I am changing my dress. I am putting a medicine on my, uh, on my thigh, scratching, itching. Then I touch, okay? Then no problem. And when they, sorry, when they mean touch, it means by your palm. By the palm. Taib? Yes. Helping somebody. What, what, again, helping? <laughs> Why? Age? Age? Okay. Helping, helping uh, all people. Or for example, in the hospital. Okay, the nurse. Of course, yeah, we have to be careful. We have to be careful, subhanAllah. And the hospitals, usually they don't respect the rules. Of Sharia, maybe because most of them female nurses, most of them, I think ninety percent female nurses. Okay, or yeah, I'm not sure, but uh, the percentage, but for sure, more than fifty percent, the nurses are females, and this is a problem. With, uh, yeah, sometimes you have a surgery, and you you have a female nurse, and you need for dressing for something bandage. This is a problem. So, so now the, the issue is not about your wudu. The issue is this is haram. 
to expose your aura for for males and it will be more haram for females <laughs> subhanallah this is serious طيب? so to clean of course also we should we should tell them you clean by the left hand yeah suppose there is an old patient and he cannot move paralyzed طيب? so don't clean by using the right hand use the left hand use the left hand in cleaning the 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 najasa the filth okay even with using the glove don't don't touch with the left hand uh, the, the right hand if you can don't touch if you can huh? okay if the, uh, can i see the the private part if you can avoid this then we tell you halas you have to avoid if you can you if you can avoid you should avoid because still this is aura this is aura this is private part and it is haram to look at the aura okay but for example i need i need to to see to remove the najasa to remove and also sometimes i need to check yani uh, the, for the the old people yeah, for example if you have your father your mother the grandfather grandmother okay and you need to change the diapers okay you need to look, to see every day or every time maybe there is a disease there is a skin pigmentation so you need to see okay you need you need you need to see okay. and subhanallah uh, we have experience about the the children there are a lot of books there are a lot of lectures and people talk about the the children the kids how to take care how to change how, how to clean but do we have lectures about the parents how to take care there to take care subhanallah yani well i don't remember lectures finish one hour maybe or what is the problem I don't know what is the problem. Huh? There is a call? So subhanallah, يعني, we don't see lectures talking about the parents. Okay, yes, there are lectures. يعني, be kind with your parents, take care. But to talk, to talk in details, they need a special care. It is, it is called geriatric, okay? There is a special care, but people don't care. Many, I, I mean, many people don't care about the parents, how to deal with them, okay? We don't have experience. We have to read, we have to learn, we have, we have to spread the knowledge about the parents, to take care about the parents. The issue is not only to provide the food, okay? Also how to, to sit with them and to, to make their memory good. Okay, yeah, and to, we should try to delay the Alzheimer. Okay, because we are not talking with them. Khalas, we provide food, and when we visit them, we are with our mobiles, checking our the mobiles, and okay, and the parents doing what? Yes. If the person? Uh, uh, uh. Clean what? Okay, if there is bag for for the the filth, okay. Again, we should avoid using the right hand. We should avoid the right hand. The right hand should be for, as we mentioned, for the salam, to take, to give, to eat, and the left hand for the other things. Okay, not comfortable. Maybe we need. To practice with with time, it will be okay. But if it is not possible, okay, then yeah, sometimes you need to use both hands. Sometimes you need to use both. I mean, if there is a way to avoid using the right hand, خلاص. But if there is no way, خلاص. No need to question. <laughs> okay, if there is no way, okay, خلاص. I need, for example, two hands to to open. And to fix, you know, some, some patients, they need, every time, every time they go to the toilet, they need to change the bag. SubhanAllah, it is not easy. 
okay and and to fix and to to uh, to, to tie and tie they need they need both hands what to do okay allah yashfi may allah cure them uh, number uh, which number now nine. number 9 al istinja wal istijmar al istinja wal istijmar al istinja is to clean the area that is affected by stool with water al istijmar it means by stones okay some scholars said this and other scholars said istijmar istinja the same by stones or by, or by or by water. Uh, both of them are allowed. Both of them are allowed. But which one is better? The water. Stinja. By using, by using the water. By using uh, the water. طيب. Using the water, as we said, this is better. And as we mentioned last Saturday, Allah praised the people of Quba because they are using the water in their cleanliness. Now, using the stones. What are the rules in using the stones? Number one, using the stones is allowed even with the presence of water. For example, now I go to the toilet and I use the stone. Is it allowed? Yes. We have plenty of water. And using the water is easier than using the stones. Can I use this? Yes, this is allowed. This is allowed. طيب. When you use the stones, you use three stones at least. To use three stones at least. طيب. Why? Because Hadith Salman, the Prophet وسلم, said, it is forbidden to use less than three stones. And some scholars like Sheikh Mu'tamin said, uh, not necessarily three stones, even you can use one big stone which has three sides or more. So you clean yourself by this side and the other side and the third side. For example, if there is a stone big like this box, so you use this side, one, two, three, four, five, you have, okay? So they said this is allowed. They said this is allowed, طيب. Can I use something other than the stones? Yes. Why? Because the Prophet ﷺ told us not to, not to use bones, dung, and the third one, I mentioned that Saturday. No, in the hadith, in the hadith. The third one. We mentioned, call, yes, call. Hamama, in the hadith it is called Hamama. What does it mean of hamama? Hamama means fahm. Fahm. Call. This hadith authentic by Sheikh Al-Albani. Rahimullah. Charcoal, yes. It is not allowed. And also the scholars, they, they, some of them mentioned, also the food of the human beings, it is not allowed. The food of the human being. Is not allowed to use, for example, apple, banana, orange. This is also not allowed. This is to eat, not to use for cleanliness. Yes, Ayub. Anything? Uh, uh, after using the stone, we can uh, do the wudu and we can pray. Yes, after using the stone, can we make wudu and we pray? Yes. If you follow the rules, you can. If you use the rules, you can. What are the rules? As we mentioned, you use three stones or a big stone with three sides. And also you make sure that you clean yourself. Maybe three stones are not enough. If the three stones are not enough, how many stones should you use? Five. Seven. Nine. And uh, yes. So other than these things, I mean these three things, this is, can be used. The tissue, the wood, something, the piece of cloth, this is allowed. This is allowed, okay? But they said it is not allowed to use the paper of the books. For example, book of hadith, book of tafsir, book of seerah. No, this is not allowed. Why? Because this is something, yani, hadith and Quran. 
not allowed. Or e even something useful, knowledge, a book of, for example, Arabic language, you don't use. We don't use. This is to, to read and to get the benefit, not to clean your, yourself in the toilet. They, or to use, يعني, some of them said to use a piece, a part of animal, the tail of the animal. <laughs> they mentioned this as an example. Okay, Allah, I don't know if people do this or not. If you, you have a cat, can I use the cat to clean myself? <laughs> you need three cats, huh? <laughs> <laughs> the scholars mention, they mention. So some of them say, they, this, is not, this is not acceptable. And others who say, no, what is, what, what is the problem with using the cat, for example, or the tail of the cat? What is the problem if it is not najis? It is not the, the cat najis? It is not najis. So you have three, five cats with you. So use the tail of your cat. Huh? <laughs> but if, can, can we use them? Okay, some scholars said, no, this is not allowed. Other scholars said, what is the problem to use them? <laughs> the, the, point, the point is, is it halal or haram? If someone told you, this is haram or halal, if you say this is haram, you have to give them a proof. صح? I know this is funny, okay? <laughs> but also, we have to be careful. Before saying this is haram, I have to make sure that I have a proof. So I cannot tell the people this is haram and I don't have a proof. Okay? Huh? It's dangerous. Well, it depends. It depends. What is, your, what is your relationship with this cat? Okay? And the things which are forbidden, al-adum wal Al-adum wal This is mentioned in point number 10. Ali huwa bones or manure. Bones or manure. This is, this is forbidden. Number 11, as we mentioned, istihbab al-istijmar witran. You have to use the odd number, three or more. Three. Or more. When one performs istinja, sorry, istinja, it is recommended to clean an odd number of times. Of course, he means three or more, not one, because one is an odd number. But this is not acceptable here. It should be at least three times. At least three, three times. Why? Because the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Man istajmara faliyutir." Because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, when one of, of you performs istijmar, then let him perform it an odd number of times. The last point, when one is, the, uh, is in the bathroom, it is disliked for him to talk. And what is the proof? He said, they derived that dislike from the hadith of Ibn Umar, in which a man passed by the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam who was urinating at the time the man gave the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam salam but the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam did not answer the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam did not answer so they said giving the salam back is wajib it's wajib so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam did not say the wajib so it means it is haram to talk if saying that, if replying the wajib, if replying the salam, which is compulsory, he did not do this, the Prophet said, then it means it is haram to talk. Shaykh al-Albani, rahimahullah, said, we cannot say it is haram to talk. Shaykh al-Albani said in his great book, Silsilat al-Hadith al-Sahiha. Why we say it is haram to talk? The hadith is specifically about what? Giving the salam back. And the Prophet ﷺ said, Inni karihd. I disliked. I disliked. So, number one, we should not say this is haram. If you like to say, you say makruh. And number two, 
It is about giving the salam, and giving the salam back is a kind of dhikr. So general talking is not haram. And what is forbidden or what is makruh is to reply the salam. So if you reply the salam, this is makruh, not haram. This is makruh, not haram. And the Prophet ﷺ told him, if you see me urinating, then you give me salam, I will not reply. So what is specifically uh, makruh? Making dhikr while urinating. This is makruh. So if it is after urinating, it means you urinate and finish, and now you are cleaning yourself. Can I give back salam? Yes. Okay, you are urinating, but you are saying something general, not dhikr. Is it allowed? This is allowed. Someone asks you, where is, uh, uh, will you join us to the halqa? Yes, I'm joining you. I will come late. I, you can't speak. You can't speak. Okay, but of course, we, yani, using the mobile or to attend a meeting. Or, yani, we, don't want, we don't want to make the toilet or the bathroom as a meeting room or a restaurant. Or <laughs> yes, because... because uh, so far, because the hadith, I did not continue the hadith. The, prof, the man asked the Prophet about the private part. He said, you should protect yourself, except from your wife and your slave. At the end of the hadith, the man said, Oh, Rasulullah, what about if I am alone? I am alone. My wife is not with me, my friend, and no people. The Prophet said, فَاللَّهُ أَحَقُّ أَن يُسْتَحْيَا مِنْ he said, to be shy from Allah, this is more important. This is more important. Okay? So we should try, and subhanAllah, some scholars, not all scholars, some scholars said, it is haram to stay in the toilet uncovered more than a need, the needed time. Okay? Maybe so, some people with, with, uh, with the mobile, okay, and they are checking the WhatsApp, or they are watching some YouTube, they finish. <laughs> Something, okay? <laughs> so some scholars said, this is haram. Why? Because you are exposing your aura without a need. You are exposing your aura without need. Okay? Other scholars said, no, this is not haram. This is not haram. Why? Because we don't have a proof. I am alone. No one is say, seeing my aura. And I said, Bismillah, even the shaitan, shaitan is not watching my aura. So, khalas. Jazakumullah khair wa sallillahu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.